Welcome back to Man Across New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling, and shall we see what's going on on our lovely little island of Horn Hollow today? And do I have some interesting news for you? Well, it's, it's not really that interesting, I suppose, but <laughs> let, let's not hype it up too much. You know, it, it's always a worry when you be like, oh, is this interesting news? Is this not interesting news? Like, you know, kind of it depends on your frame of reference. Reference? Reference. And depends on, you know, your interest in that sort of things and where your, <laughs> I was going to say where your allegiances lie, which is a bit more of an extreme thing than I intended for it to be. It's not like we're going into battle or anything, we're just here to play some Animal Crossing, so here we are. Hello there, everyone, right now in Fawn Hollow, it's 4.41pm on Thursday, May 20th, 2021. Really doesn't need to speak of today, but we'll carry on. I have received a very interesting text um, about an hour, a bit over an hour ago for my local general practitioner that I apparently can get a COVID vaccine or the first shot of a COVID vaccine, which is incredibly exciting. Um, I'm surprised because I didn't think UK had quite reached um, my age group, obviously, like I'm, um, how old am I? <laughs> 24 this year, um, I'm 23. So the fact that I'm even on the list right now is astonishing, but hey, think fast, you know, you ever buy something for a friend, but then get a good workout with him going up and completely forget to give it to him? Uh, me neither. Oh, by the way, your arms are looking real buff lately. Nailed it. Flip. We definitely have got this um, letter before. Yeah, because I, I even, I looked at the text and I thought it was like a, <laughs> a spam text being like, oh, that can't possibly be true. There's no way I'm, I'm getting a vaccine now. I'm, I'm going to be like the last group to get it probably. Or one of the last groups in like 18 to 24 M must be the last group. I, I I can't imagine what other group would be. <laughs> no, Lily. Sorry. <laughs> I want you to stay. Well, that means like another three days or something without having a villager move out. But yeah, it's it's, it's astonishing. I, I looked at it and I was like, this is a joke. And I, I checked and I was like, oh wait, hold on. This is my actual general practitioner's um, texts. And then I called him and I'd be like, am I actually getting here? And they were like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> Because I, I checked on the NHS website, apparently um, the, the stage we're at is where, I, I don't know why I'm looking for goods we've got with the songs, um, it's for uh, people who are age 34 and above, and you know, I'm like a whole 10 years younger than that, so the fact I got it in the first place, I mean, maybe I've been marked as someone who, who might have a <laughs> slightly more vulnerable than an average healthy 34 year old, I, I don't know, but, or maybe our, our region is just going incredibly quickly. Which honestly I'm incredibly thankful for, because that's, you know, quite exciting. I mean, vaccines are just miraculous works of, well not even miraculous, so there's strong science behind them, but there's years of dedication and research been put into them, so let's not try and um, sully the good name of the scientists before us to put their hard work into vaccinations. Ended up um, procuring them for us, but the fact that I'm getting one now is pretty cool, to be honest. Um, I can update you on that on Saturday when I actually go and get it. Or oh, actually, I'm not sure because on Saturday I might be busy later that day. So <laughs> it may be that I end up recording the Animal Crossing video in the morning and then <laughs> go get the shot. So at least on Sunday. Actually, what? I'm trying to think <laughs> because things are happening this week. So I'm trying to think um, how to balance things out. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, one of the days on the weekend. I'll certainly be talking about it, but vaccinations, you know, it's just incredible, and like, you know, the, the whole process has been, hello Sahara, quite difficult, I'm sure, uh, but the scientists, all the scientists and biologists, or well, anyone who can contribute to the creation of such a vaccine, have been working, probably like non-stop getting it out, and you know, producing it, and you know, a, few, a while back, a few months back, or whatever, they started producing them, and releasing them to the public, well, not releasing them to the public per se, but like, administering them to the public, and it's fantastic, you know, starting with the elderly population as it should do and the, the clinically vulnerable it should definitely get those first and you know as much as it is easy well I don't know because I've heard that people just be like oh man <laughs> if I had the opportunity to get the vaccine now I would have had something like I'm perfectly fine because I, I know my lot I know that I'm not clinically vulnerable I know that I'm, since I'm still relatively young I have a decent chance of surviving and if, if, I, if I did end up contracting um, Covid so the fact that I was so like late in line, it was just something you know I accepted. I was just like, you know, that's just gonna have, be how it is. It, it, it should be this way. You know, I'd much rather you know everyone, <laughs> the people who need it, get it first. The fact that it's actually come to me now, when I didn't expect to get it until like June or July, it was like, oh, well, I mean, I guess it's nearly June. It's, it was just like, wow. I mean, the world is slowly going back to normal operations, and I'm sure we'll still sort of feel the, the drag behind it for a few years. But still, the fact it's happening is just like, wow. <laughs> It's almost a dream. 
But it's very exciting, I must say. Um, so, of course, as soon as I saw the text, I was like, oh, got to call them. <laughs> ASAP. I actually got the text in the middle of recording a Chicken Police episode. And I don't normally... Um, I didn't normally uh, check my phone when I get, like, messages and, and during recording things. But for some reason, I checked it this time. And I looked and I was like, what? <laughs> I didn't mention what it was because I was like, I know I'm going to talk about it now I'm crossing. So, I know you'll see the, the fruits of that whenever that video gets uploaded, probably, like, in halfway through June or something. So yeah, um, obviously vaccines are a fantastic thing, like I'm, I know I don't <laughs> tend to talk about these sort of things too much, I tend to talk about like nostalgic memories and like TV shows and whatever, I don't tend to talk about, well, to a certain extent I talk about real world, but you know, I try to keep things comfy, you know, like a tea party, but I suppose at a tea party you maybe you talk about vaccines, it's, it's well established for me, uh, vaccines are good things, um, vaccines do not cause any harmful effects well, not the harmful effects that are so often tooted by people who um, speak for speak from ignorance, shall we say, rather than malice. Attribute what you can to ignorance instead of malice, and you know everything becomes a lot easier. I also completely forgot what our Nook Mar missions were because I was too distracted. Um, fossils, chop wood, shoot balloon. Okay, talk to someone. Easily done. So um, yeah, if you get your vaccine opportunity and you is something that you actually just like physically can take. Like in any sense or whatever, or you <laughs> please do have it. Um, I know they're rolling out, and it depends on the country and that sort of thing. But um, UK, at least over here, are doing an okay enough, good enough job, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> so I don't know. It's just kind of weird. I suppose these past two years have all been kind of weird, haven't they? Wait, has it been two years or one year? Wait, when <laughs> when did the outbreak happen? It was last year. It was last year. It's only been one year. What am I talking about? <laughs> I had to think. I was like, wait a minute. It's not been two years, has it? Um, I suppose depending on when you come and start of it. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess it's nice to have a sort of return to normalcy. This doesn't change. Like, obviously, I want to see all my friends like all together rather than <laughs> in groups of four, like no oh, groups of six. Sorry, two meters apart. Even though um, the UK rules have definitely um, laxed up a bit about it recently. It was May 7th, the ruling is now, and you can meet up again and you're not. Because I, I guess a large percentage of the population have now been vaccinated. Apparently it's like 70% or something. That's what I've heard. I don't actually know if that figure's right, but that's absurd. That is crazy. That rally remains fresh. Unfortunately, Blavers, we are not going, to, not going to be participating in it today. But that's uh, super cool. Yeah, um... I mean, you might be watching, you might have already had your vaccine, your first dose, second dose, de depending on who you are, how old you are, that sort of thing. Congratulations to you as well, you know? It, this is not like a sort of thing, but like, oh, wish I was you, could have cut in line and done that sort of thing. No, like, this is the sort of thing where you sort of like, cherish humanity together as a whole, you know? We're all in this together, so why wouldn't we all wish the best for each other, in that sort of sense, you know? I guess that's the kind of way I look at it. And you know, vaccinations, this sort of thing, like, Healthcare, I suppose, in general, is just a sort of a miracle of humanity, or uh, some members of humanity. Because <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not going to like take credit for you know like Alexander Fleming discovering penicillin, because obviously I didn't know work in <laughs> that regard. But um, the strong desire of humanity to help and protect and protect others, you know, care for others in certain sense, which I think is heartwarming, to say the least. And now, you know, after the tireless efforts. Of medical staff have been putting in to procure vaccines and look after people who have been affected by it. We can hopefully um, move on past this sort of situation. Not move on and like forget it entirely. You just move on, learn from a situation, and now we're better suited to that sort of thing. Because uh, um, one thing I think will certainly happen is um, I'm not, I shouldn't talk like it's already over. I mean, just <laughs> even if I'm getting vaccinated, there's still going to be tons of people who haven't got vaccinated yet. It's not like I'm the last person on the list. <laughs> I just somehow, fortunately, have ended up <laughs> receiving one. Um, but still. It's miraculous and heartwarming, to say the least. And it sort of, like you know, char charges your whole wholesome batteries, I suppose. Which could ugh, always do with some charging. Sorry, I was just scratching my back. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Vaccination is just, just a, a testament to humanity's desire for... What was... This is new dialogue. What was with you smiling at your phone so much yesterday? You save up a ton of miles or something? I had, I had no idea they had a phone dialogue. That is new. 
new tech, new tech. Yeah, vaccinations is just sort of like, um, I mean, it was entire effort. Like, it kind of made me wish I went into <laughs> a medicine field, I suppose. Medical studies, that sort of thing. You know, I, I, I'm not sure if I talked about this before, but um, back when I was choosing A-levels, um, if you don't know what A-levels are, they're basically like the subjects you need to take to get into uni university in the UK. Because right? I know in America it's different. In America, universities are much more sort of like widespread. You need to be like a good in lots of different subjects and that sort of thing, while UK is rather specialised, I believe. Yeah, so um, obviously I, I was going to do maths and further maths because um, quite maths based. We didn't have additional maths as a option in our school, but you know I decided it was a bit unnecessary. But perhaps it would have been better. And then you know, and did physics as well, and I did electronics because that was a another techie science subject which I was very good at. And then I had a final option to do five, to do a fifth one because that was an optional thing that you could do in our school. Um, you don't you don't need five. You only need three really for university. But most people normally did four, then sometimes drop that fourth one if you want. But a lot, some of the overachievers did five and then dropped the fifth one in the second year, so they only did the first half of it. Um, I, I took five all the way to the end for some apparent reason, because I'm, I don't know, I guess I was an overachiever in that sense. Um, but I was, I was wondering, I was like, well, what should I do for my fifth subject? And the two options I had, or I narrowed it down to, were chemistry and biology. There was an option of geography, but I didn't really like geography, so I wasn't going to do it. And I was like, okay, well, I mean... Maybe I should keep my options open, or if I wanted to do something medical related in the future, maybe I should do biology because, you know, it, I suppose that sort of thing pertains to my interests of, you know, either, along with everyone else, well, maybe not everyone else, but along with a lot of people, I have a great deal of respect for what doctors do and for society and what they can provide because it's a, I'm not sure if it's a thankless job, it probably is depending if you are a doctor or not, they well, no, certainly better than I will, but it's a very tiring job that people, um, I suppose, underestimate how much work and that sort of thing that needs to go into it um so i was like maybe i'll keep my options open you know do dabble in bit of biology <laughs> but then i can't remember why and i ended up choosing chemistry in the end did it really matter not really because i have i've not used <laughs> either of those knowledge since but you know my desire to help is still there i suppose and the medical field is probably i suppose one of the most direct ways of helping because um i don't know when i was younger uh, a few jobs that I, well, I shouldn't say one of the, I should, I should say when I was thinking about a teen, a teenager and thinking about future job prospects and that something, sort of one of them that came up was related to medical field, I was like, maybe I should become like a paramedic or something. Directly helping people, you know, check, that's something I like to do. Stressful, it's a stressful job, mind you, but I am also very calm in stressful situations. Well, I'm calm a lot of the time, which I suppose, you know, doesn't exclude the fact that also being calm in stressful situations. So um, I thought maybe I can execute one of my job. You know, someone needs to do it. <laughs> Downside, I can't drive and I had really no intention to drive. <laughs> or learn to drive at any point or <laughs> amusingly any drive to drive. So that kind of meant like, you know, I kind of think that's something that's quite necessary. Also downside, um, was it? Iron wall rack, old fashioned bathtub. Um, also, no medical experience, so, you know, kind of neither here nor there. But no, now I'm doing well, my statistical... So, where's the old-fashioned bathtub? I don't even know what iron wall rack is. Old-fashioned bathtub, I know what it is. I just can't see it. But it's also really expensive to make, so I don't know if that's the one I want to make. Iron wall rack. Oh. That's actually quite cheap. Let's do, let's do this one then. We need to get more clay, though, so let's hit more rocks. But doesn't mean statistical things can't also do something similar to help out the world, you know? Statistical, statistical analysis on COVID databases, that sort of thing. Seeing modelling the spread, modelling blah blah blah, etc, etc. Data analysis. Contributing in its own way, but I suppose part of me always does desire the, the more directness of it, I suppose, and medically helping out on field. So, you know, maybe in another life there's a there's a dear darling who's a paramedic and that sort of thing. Would I be any good at it? Maybe not, I don't actually know for sure, but it's just something if I were to be in a medical field, that's what I would I, I would choose to do. Which is I think, I suppose in some aspects kind of a surprising choice because it's quite um intense, shall we say, being a paramedic compared to a lot of other fields. Like you have to deal with a lot. I mean I think all doctors have to deal with a lot to begin with in the same place, um, not the same place, um, 
in a similar vein so it's not really a competition but you know it's quite intense which I suppose maybe it's something you don't garner from my personality as much am I an intense person? no not really but like also I had no experience in it so it could be possible that this other alternate reality me you know tried it and then was like oh gosh this is really not for me and then just like bailed out of it as soon as, as soon as you could which you know I didn't harbour any resentment anything of that ilk. Oh, we should keep fossils now I think about it because we might get the sell a load of things one. Um, so yeah, I know. Basically what I'm just saying is mad respect to all the, the doctors and all the medical staff and and everyone who basically contributed in any way, form or other, you know, testers, that sort of thing, to the fact that I can be getting my vaccine on the weekend long journey and you know I've basically directly contributed like nothing to it because there's not really much I can do I suppose it's times like this where I'd be like oh man I wish I could like lend brain power somehow just be like oh this doctor is like super tired or something you know let me like give you my energy <laughs> literally like in like a, in a Dragon Ball Z sort of way I like hold up my arms and they can be like all right I've got the, the will to keep going and helping people like what am I doing I, I don't need it when I'm just like at home playing video games or something <laughs> uh, unfortunately, world doesn't that work away, but you know the cooperation's still there between humanity and that sort of thing. So you know, rainbow, rainbow at the end of a tunnel. <laughs> That's not really the thing. I mean, see, it's light at the end of a, of a tunnel, but you know, rainbow sounds even nicer in that sort of aspect. So yeah, basically, uh, we should put that down. I forgot. It's just cool, you know. It's cool where we are, but uh, that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. That it's, um, things are sort of wrapping up, I suppose. So it's kind of exciting in certain aspects. Or not even kind of it. I suppose it is exciting, isn't it? That this is, um, what the future holds. It's kind of weird as well to think about. <laughs> Am I? I'm probably, I was going to say, am I the only one? Probably not the only one. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people feel like it, it's like, wow. Like, I, obviously it's a sort of a once in a lifetime experience while well, you hope fingers crossed at least um, but hopefully from now the future will be a little bit more prepared if situations like this come up again you know we're all in this together that sort of thing so I'm getting a bit weirdly sentimental <laughs> not weirdly sentimental but it's just like um, I don't know what to say like, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking with a sense of finality. It's, it's not over yet. Like, it's only the first dose, mind you. But, um, it's just, it's just cool. Because I was just sitting there thinking about it. Like, after I put my point, I was like, wow, you know, vaccines? They are cool, you know? It's a good thing they exist. Life is so much better with them. You know, medical care and all that sort of thing. And I suppose that it's fortunate to live. Not even just, just in the times where something like this is possible, but even like in a country where it's feasible to, where it's been rolled out so quickly. And um, I suppose free healthcare is always nice. A nice contributing factor to that sort of thing. It's just, it's just nice. Nothing more, nothing less. You know? <laughs> I, I know I'm sort of going around in circles usually here, but um, it's because usually I try to like, be a little bit more comedic when I record these Animal Crossing videos because I know <laughs> the gameplay. In, yeah. No, no one's watching these videos for the gameplay anymore when I'm crossing. I think is very much of a commentary. So I'm just like I try to put a bit more excitement, try to put a little bit of sauce on everything. But you know, at heart, that's not really like me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not that much of a comedic person. I'm not always about cracking jokes and that sort of thing. I'm much more just sort of like to marvel in existence, ponder, philosophical. You might ask. I'm not even sure philosophical is the right term. So sort of like um. Cozy, I suppose. <laughs> nice way to do it. These Animal Crossing videos are meant to feel like a tea party, you know, drinking tea with a good friend on a on a weekend afternoon or something like that, rather than a, having a pint of beer, have a pub with your mates. So, um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not putting any sauce on this, this one. It's a bit more closer to, I suppose, how I actually talk about things rather than, you know, trying to <laughs> come up with random discussion by creating straw men 
arguments in my head and <laughs> stoke some comedic value out of it. But um, it's just miraculous, you know. But it's a thing, and you know, vaccines and medical care. But this is how it's ended up. Like, I can imagine the people who like created it or helped distribute it just like looking, looking back at this in a few years from now, being like, yeah, these are some dark times. But look at the fruits of the labour and where where it's gone now. You know. Now, lots of people played their part. I won't say necessarily everyone, because I feel like that's unfair to the people who did most of the heavy lifting, you know? They should absolutely get the highest praise and awards, that sort of thing. Will they? Uh, it depends, I suppose, how you receive your praise. Admiration from this one random person in YouTube video, aka me. Yeah, I mean, in some aspects. Does that mean a lot to you? Probably not, but I suppose, <laughs> selfishly, it means a lot to me. Not in the sense that I'm trying to take credit for your pride, but like, um, I put in no effort for the contribution of a, va a vaccine. Well, apart from like, obviously, like, following <laughs> safety guidelines and that sort of thing, you know, staying inside as much as possible to minimize spread. That's my way, but that's a bit of an indirect contribution. But the fact I still get to um, share the rewards that everyone else has gotten of just having a vaccine and being protected, you know? It's just, it's just nice. And there's a lot of things to appreciate in life. Because, you know, there's lots of things in life to be thankful for a lot in the first place. So, you know, what? Well, this is an episode, a random episode, dedicated to being thankful for medical care. And all things related to it. That, that led to us, well, maybe not everything that led to us to that point. Not very thankful towards the, the actual infection itself. But the humanitarian efforts put in to lead to the vaccination I'll be getting on Saturday. You might be asking, hey, which one am I getting? Am I getting Pfizer? Am I getting, was it Oxford? AstraZeneca? There's another one, but I can't remember it. <laughs> off the top of my head. I actually have no idea. I'm not too fussy. Um, obviously, there's, you know, blood, blood clots are kind of a a worry for the AstraZeneca slash Oxford one, which, you know, I'd rather not get because I'd, I'm taking medication, which kind of <laughs> increase my risk of blood clots. But as I understand it, it's something you get a choice on. You get to the top and be like, which one do you want? So, you know. In the end, I'm not going to be too fussy. A vaccination is a vaccination. <laughs> Anything to help contribute to the herd immunity of it. Like, I remember being taught about vaccinations in school and being learning about herd immunity, where I was just like, I don't know. It's, it's one of those few things which sort of, like, blew my mind. Not, like, blew my mind, like, whoa, I can't believe this exists, but literally like, oh, yeah, that's actually, like, such a good way to do it. Because it's something you don't think about all too often, is some people just straight up can't have vaccines because, you know, they're allergic to, like, whatever, like, mediums they use. And I'm not talking about people who falsely claim it, I'm talking about people who actually legitimately can't have a vaccine because of whatever, um, like, I don't know, solvents or whatever go into it to um, help distribute it to you, or they have compromised immune systems and that sort of thing. And the fact that, just by nature of everyone else having the vaccine, herd immunity sort of protects them. It, well, it doesn't sort of, it does protect them, in that sort of sense. They can get shielded by the good efforts, not good efforts, by everyone else sort of volunteering in their place. Not volunteering, because like, you know, <laughs> that makes it sound like it's a selfless action. It's not selfish, it's selfless. It's, you know, you're getting something out of it by getting a vaccination. You're getting immunized to whatever infection or disease it is as well. But um, I don't know, <laughs> anytime sort of like big cooperation teamwork happens, it sort of just rings a wholesome bell in my heart, <laughs> to put it in some weirdly poetic way for no apparent reason. Um, I know, obviously, there's people who, like, try and deny vaccines and their efficacy and aren't doing their part, which, ugh, whatever. <laughs> I like to think, um, I like to think people are good people, on the whole, you know? And the majority of people are doing well, or abiding by rules and that sort of thing. Even if maybe that's not necessarily technically true, it's, um, something that's a lot easier to sit with, I suppose, in my mind. We don't need to sell the fruits, right? Not yet. See if we get them the other ones. Um, yeah, because just believe the best in people, that sort of thing. Oh, we need to fish. I forgot. Water flowers, fish, buy things, hit more rocks, apparently. So, yeah, what, what a long journey it's been. Wait. <laughs> It's weird to think about that this sort of event is going to be written about in history books as well, almost certainly. 
I, I don't know, maybe a hundred years from now or something. Or whatever appropriate time period for it to be written about in. But it's going to be like kids in the future or something who might like, oh, be like plagues and deadly diseases and the spread and the human reaction to it. And, you know, this will be a history book of people. Of this experience. That's, it's just so weird to think about. I wouldn't say I'm particularly like glad to live through like this sort of history, but you know, didn't really get much say in it. Here we are. <laughs> it's probably the better way to think about it. It's just crazy. Can we give another thank you to doctors? Can we get can we get a thank you? When I say thank you, you say doctors, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheesy, I know. And to be honest, kind of utterly meaningless in a way, but it's not meant to be like in a self-inflating sort of way, right? Oh, look at me, pat myself on the back, I can thank doctors and that sort of thing. I'm doing my part. I'm, I'm, I I realise that I have a self-awareness that this is doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> Thanks to sort of meaningless in the end when it comes to society, society necessarily rather than um, being just words to make you feel good in a certain aspect. But, like... <laughs> There's only so much I can do, I suppose, in that aspect. So let's not take such a negative view on things, even though it's not really my place to say who or what, where, when, why. Of these sort of views we can take, but still. Sorry, bit of a pause there. It took her to unexpectedly run into a friend. Wait, hold on a minute. I thought you were talking to Audie. What am I looking at? Scary or adorable, dear? Or scared adorable? That's goofy, but you can't blame me. I'm scared silly, Rainy. I don't even know what you're looking at, but sure. You got a little flea on you there, Audie. So let's um catch out for you. <laughs> Lip for curse. Get out. I have fleas. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I hope nobody else noticed. <laughs> if only like everyone else wasn't standing around here, Audie, but I'm sure they probably look the other way. Thanks to your fabulous bug catching skills, I'm flea free. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really have much more else to say. Normally I try and keep like the conversation that we were spending, but you know, let it be as it is. It's the future old man. <laughs> I don't know, that's the only thing that came to mind. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. I don't know how else to put it. It's nice. And I'm, I'm thankful for everything that led to this, well everything except for the actual direct cause I suppose, but led to this point. <laughs> yeah. It is the hard work of thousands or something who can provide for the billions. And hopefully, you know, if you're watching us and you're in the UK and specifically live in my area, which I'm obviously not going to disclose, um, maybe you'll be getting uh, your vaccine soon or maybe you already got yours and, you know, you can celebrate along with me. Sooner or later, there'll be a theoretical chance that we could meet up. Is that going to happen? No. But, like, <laughs> it's a principle which matters in this case. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I was a bit mean-spirited <laughs> mean to end up on. I, don't, I just feel that. I just feel chill. I just feel chill, you know? It's like a, it's like a good mood sort of feeling. If this is how it's going to go. If this is how it's going to be. It's exciting. Exhilarating, almost. Well, not really exhilarating. <laughs> I suppose it's not too exhilarating getting a needle stuck into you. Hold on. <laughs> well, I mean... I mean, there's the obvious joke there, but I'm not going to make it. <laughs> but we have breached the 100,000 Nick Wilde ticket points. And ain't that just the darndest? A jewel beetle. I don't even remember what a jewel beetle is. So we're going to sell for things and round off this episode here. As my chair slowly, slowly and sinks further and further downwards. <laughs> Making it much more difficult to... Welcome to my desk. What, oh, what have I been up today? And I haven't really answered that, have I? Recorded some chicken, please. And done some programming. That's about it. <laughs> drawing? No. Drawing is a, a nighttime activity. Not a, not a now time activity. Completely different. Um. Guess I'll just sell all of this stuff. Coin model we didn't put down, but we can put it down tomorrow. I don't know why I'm selling that, to be honest. And we'll round off this episode here. And yeah. All the best to all of you, I suppose. Actually, another thing I was going to point out is that I can't believe people are actually watching these Animal Crossing videos. The only person who comments is Reach. From <laughs> time to time. Which is fair enough, you know. Like, if you don't want to comment, don't comment. But I still look at the 
the video views, and it sometimes gets like up to like ten views, and I'm like, what? <laughs> like I understand why people are watching Fez and like the other things, so, like, it's a bit more engaging. But yeah, Animal Crossing videos, really? I mean, fair enough. Don't let me stop you. You know, <laughs> playing Animal Crossing is fun and relaxing, but you know, I, I don't really have much more to say to that. So um. Shout out to all of you also watching Animal Crossing video right now. <laughs> videos right now. If you have been watching both, thank you very much. This has been Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been Dear Darling. Likes, comments, subscriptions, shares are greatly appreciated. Links down below. I hope we can see each other again. But for now, it's our farewell. So until next time, here's to healthcare, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why it's like a, a toast. Okay, whatever. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>